make lifestyle choices to enhance your well-being. This is Natural Inspirations. You are listening to Natural Inspirations Podcast, the show where we have conversations with local natural health experts on the space and treasure coast. Welcome to episode 36. I'm Chris Urquhart. Today, we're talking to Morgan Kane about how leg pain, varicose veins, and other symptoms can be indicators of your heart's health. Hi, Morgan. Thank you for joining me today. Hi, thank you for having me, Chris. So today we're talking about heart health, or more specifically, uh, venous, arterial, cardiac disease, and some risk factors we can be aware of for ourselves and our loved ones. So let's just get right to it and start with PAD, or what's sometimes called hidden leg pain. What is PAD, and can it put us at risk for more serious issues? Yes. So I will try and simplify this as as much as I can because we try and do this for all of our patients. Um, In our practice, we are a a primarily a vascular practice, um, but the whole circulatory system is what we uh, is is where we sort of make uh, uh, is our bread and butter. So the heart is the pump of that circulatory system. So most people understand if you don't have a uh, if you don't have a pump, uh, blood doesn't circulate. so heart attacks and things like that, people are, are very, uh, you know, sort of, I don't want to say necessarily knowledgeable about, but they know the threat uh, that's involved in that. The same thing that causes heart attacks can also happen in your legs. Um, basically, what a heart attack is, is it's a plaque buildup in some of the arteries uh, in your heart that restrict blood flow <clears throat> to some of the muscles so that those muscles uh, can no longer uh, function properly. They can't pump that blood the same uh, way that they did before, sometimes causing the heart to stop. Same thing in your legs. You've got arteries that run throughout your body. They bring oxygenated blood to uh, your extremities. Um, in your legs, if you have a blockage like you do in your heart, it's considered uh, PAD or peripheral arterial disease. Uh, and basically what that does is it restricts blood flow down to your lower extremities. So that leg pain that people uh, talk about uh, is a lack of blood flow so that your muscles start to cramp or feel a cramping sensation because they're not getting enough oxygen and they're not getting enough blood flow to them. So that's, uh, it's called claudication, uh, especially if it gets worse while walking or exercising, that is a clear sign of peripheral arterial disease. Uh, And sort of vice versa, peripheral arterial disease is a, somewhat of a warning sign for us that we also need to look at a patient's heart. So you can actually rule out um, or identify a patient that might be at risk for heart disease by getting a lower extremity uh, scan or, uh, or ABI, which is, uh, which, is a, uh, which is a test that we do to make sure that blood is flowing in your extremities the way that it should. <clears throat> So you mentioned leg pain. Are there other common symptoms that we could be on the lookout for to make us think we might want to give you a call or uh, risk, even risk factors? Is age a factor and that kind of thing? Yeah, so all of those things sort of uh, play a part. Diet, age, uh, all of those things. Uh, smoking is a, is a big risk factor. Um, and uh, also uh, sort of family history is a huge risk factor. So um, some of the symptoms, Claudication is a big one. Resting leg pain or active leg pain, um, and it, leg pain is is one of those things that you can um, you can kind of put into three kind of categories: uh, joint and bone pain. So, like if you sprain your sprain your ankle or something like that, that's pain. Uh, muscle pain. You pull a muscle or something like that, and you've got you've got pain in your calf, or your quad, or something like that. You know why that that's there. If you've got a pain that isn't one of those two, uh, or again, nerve pain if you've got uh, some type of back uh, issue that sort of radiates down into your legs. But if it isn't one of those three and you still have leg pain, most likely it is a circulatory issue. Uh, so that's why you need to come and see a, uh, a vascular surgeon. So leg pain is, is one of the big ones. Uh, another big one is uh, sort of loss of hair, uh, cold feet, skin discoloration, uh, and a big one that uh, can, this is sort of a disease that's progressed fairly, uh, fairly uh, significantly, uh, would be uh, sores or wounds on your feet that just don't heal properly. 
Uh, if they're on your feet, most likely that's arterial disease. If you've got wounds kind of a little bit higher up above your ankle, a lot of the time that's venous disease. And we'll get into that a little bit later uh, and I'll explain why. Okay, so you mentioned that there's a test or a, yeah, a test that you run to diagnose PAD. Is the treatment Correct. surgical or is it something? Else? So treatment, uh, like with everything, we try and be as uh, conservative as we possibly can. So uh, a lot of time diet and exercise uh, can help, but once PAD is there, uh, at that point, you're really just trying to manage it. So you don't want it to get worse so that something can happen because ultimately with PAD, uh, worst case scenario is an amputation, uh, whether that's below knee or above knee. That's kind of what we're, what we're fighting against here. Um, but the earlier that somebody is diagnosed, the more that can be done. And there are a lot of options. So uh, diet and exercise is one. Uh, increase in, in activity, uh, things like that can be offered. Uh, medications can be offered uh, to slow the process. And then ultimately, uh, there is a surgical factor uh, that can uh, that can be offered. Nowadays, that is uh, th with some of the technology or whatever that's out there, and we offer this uh, within our clinic. It's very it's minimally invasive. So before they used to these were called open procedures, where a surgeon would go in with a scalpel, open things up, and sort of fix the plumbing from the inside or sort of from the outside inside, right? Mm -hmm. Now it's all done from the inside. So we can actually with a, just a needle stick, we can uh, put sort of a bunch of instruments through that very small needle hole um, and fix everything uh, non-invasively. So recovery time is next day, um, limited pain, less risk, all of those things. And we do all of that stuff within, uh, within the office. So you even get to avoid the risk of being subjected to some of the, the, the bugs that are out there, or whatever, that, that sort of, you know, uh, hang out in hospitals more so than they do in outpatient. Right. That's fantastic. I didn't realize that you could, I mean, so everyone's every, heard of laparoscopic, but it hadn't occurred to me that you could, it applied in other places, like. Every, everything right. is going, yeah, everything is going minimally invasive. So when I say minimally invasive, think of uh, just a, it's, it's a needle stick. So we'll stick uh, mm -hmm. an artery in your groin with a needle and then put very small, you know, sort of microscopic instruments through there that we can actually remove plaque, we can put in stents, uh, we can balloon things, all of the things that you hear about that happen in the heart, we do in the legs uh, through one needle stick and, uh, and we get sort of patients feeling uh, a lot better uh, because increasing that blood flow or whatever is almost an instantaneous, uh, you know, sort of feeling of, uh, uh, of better sort of like health. Right. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. So when we're talking about moving on to varicose veins, um, many of us, me included, when I would think about varicose veins, I just think about like the ugly bulges that we have on our legs and, you know, we don't want to look bad. But, it, but there's more to it than that, I'm sure. How, what are they really and um, how do they form? So varicose veins or your venous system is the second part of the um, of the, the circulatory system. So uh, the arteries bring oxygenated blood to your extremities. Veins bring that uh, blood back to the lungs to get reoxygenated back to the heart so that it can pump back out. We keep on doing that. So the difference between the two systems, uh, arterial system is a pressurized system. So your arteries have some elasticity to them. Uh, the heart pumps, it increases the pressure that forces blood to your extremities. So the, the venous system is not a pressurized system. The venous system is a mechanical system. So you actually have one-way valves uh, that line your, uh, your veins that bring blood back to the heart. So the heart of the venous system is the calf muscle. So you've got to move, you've got to walk, you've got to sort of uh, pump your feet in order for that system to, to work because each valve, as that muscle contracts, forces blood a little bit higher, it's not allowed to go back down because they're one-way valves. They open up to go up, they close when blood starts to, to uh, force its way down. And then that process happens each time that blood just keeps on going up level to level until it gets back to your heart. Uh, so varicose veins are, for the most part, uh, valves that have uh, sort of lost their function uh, for a, several different reasons. It could be injury that there was actually an injury to that valve. 
it could be that the um, that the walls of the veins have been stretched so that those valves are no longer touching. Uh, it could be a bunch of different things. Uh, you know, blood clot leads to um, leads to varicose veins just because there isn't enough pressure to sort of push that blood clot mm. out. So you just have a backlog of of blood that you know that that swells up in these veins. So that's what we're working against. So we need to do a test to see where that problem is coming from, whether it is a blood clot or whether it is a faulty valve or whether it is just a um, a vein that has you know, sort of because of pressure been forced larger than it is. And then we can address that problem and fix that problem. So the way that we figure that out is with an ultrasound. And an ultrasound shows us which way that blood is going. Uh, and it allows us to, to figure out where there is venous insufficiency, which is basically uh, blood going the wrong way. So once we find out that there's blood going the wrong way, we can ad uh, address that problem. Uh, and that's that's the venous system uh, in, a, in a nutshell. So all of this needs to work um, in sort of uh, in in uh, in synchronicity or whatever. It's probably not a word, but in in harmony, uh, in order for uh, for these things uh, for for somebody to have a healthy circulatory system, because both sides can cause different problems. On the venous side, uh, just like on the arterial side, you've got symptoms like restless leg syndrome or uh, again, varicose veins, which again, a lot of people think are, is cosmetic, but there's a reason, uh, an underlying reason that's causing that, that is medically necessary to, to, to treat those. Um, and then ultimately, we're looking at venous stasis ulcers, which is basically blood that pools up in those veins so much that blood then uh, starts to look for passive release resistance. So it will actually start seeping through uh the uh the uh, the the vein wall into muscular tissue then through muscular tissue through your through your skin and it, you'll actually develop uh you know sort of they'll start off small but then they eventually get to be big uh wounds normally above your ankle uh that is just sort of this constant oozing wound that most people don't want to deal with and won't heal properly unless you come and see a vascular surgeon because that underlying, uh, the underlying cause is uh, your circulatory system. That sounds painful. I assume it's painful. Uh, again, the, the wounds, once you get to that point on both sides, wounds, arterial wounds and venous wounds are extremely uh, painful and extremely hard to deal with. Um, but the treating the root cause of it is very easy. Uh, but there are so many people that just don't understand that um, this is a venous issue or a, or a, or a circulatory issue. Um, so they're just going to treat the wound, which will never heal if the, uh, if the proper treatment isn't applied to the, uh, to the circulatory system. Right, right. So what do you, how do you um, treat when that happens? How do you, you treat it? It's a surgical, least invasive like the other, or do you have another way of going? Yeah, so, so, so lucky for everybody that... Uh, on the venous side as well as the arterial side, that uh, technology has sort of, uh, you know, sort of uh, jumped leaps and bounds towards uh, minimally minimally invasive uh, procedures to to help these things. So, first and foremost, uh, conservative options are wearing those compression stockings that that people see everywhere. All right, we have to do that uh, just to see if there is going to be some uh, some benefit of that. A lot of people that come to us have already tried those and said that they have failed or this and that. Uh, if they haven't, we're going to try uh, a minimally invasive, you know, or conservative therapy first uh, to see if that helps. Uh, if that doesn't help, the next step is for, like I said, for us to, to do an ultrasound, see what's going on and, and find out where the problem is. And then luckily for people, uh, if there is a problem, it is one of the easiest uh, sort of uh, procedures or treatments that we do. We do it every day, uh, all day. It takes maybe 15 minutes uh, per patient. There's very little downtime, if any. Uh, we have teachers that come in uh, during their lunch breaks, get it done and go back to teaching that mm -hmm. same day, yes. So basically what it is, it's called a venous ablation. Uh, it's for superficial um, uh, veins that, that cause these, these issues. So once we find out where that uh, valve is, uh, you know, is faulty, um, we'll redirect blood flow from that to a deeper system. So your deep system, without getting too, too technical, so you've got two, two types of veins, uh, superficial, which are closer to, your, closer to the skin, 
and then a deep venous system, which is surrounded by muscle. That uh, deep system rarely fails just because it's insulated by muscle. So it's got the same sort of, uh, you know, sort of uh, protection that, uh, that arteries do. On the superficial side of things, they don't have that. So those tend to be the ones that fail. So where we find those to fail, we basically destroy the vein from the inside using RF energy or laser. We destroy it from the inside, which then redirects that blood uh, to your deep system, which then brings your blood back to your heart, uh, you know, efficiently the way that it's the way that it's supposed to. Uh, before uh, these procedures were all done, as we discussed sort of before, uh, open. I guess you would consider it open. They were called vein strippings. So they would actually cut your vein at the top and the bottom and basically pull that vein out. Uh, it's not the way that these things should be done. Uh, like I said, that was sort of done 15 years ago. Nowadays, it's all done with a needle stick. Uh, one little needle stick, we put all of our instrumentation through there. It's not painful whatsoever. Uh, we even have people that are scared of needles or whatever that, that go through this procedure without, you know, without hiccup. So uh, it's a needle stick or two. Uh, procedures done in about, you know, 10 to 15 minutes. We'll wrap that patient's leg and then they're, then they're off to doing their regular activities. That's fantastic. And the, yeah, and the, the, the benefits are uh, sort of seen almost instantaneously. Because like you said, the blood's going where it needs to go. Your circulatory system is working. When you talked about um, like blocking it and cutting it off, to me, it sounds like when you get rerouted on the highway and they block an exit and you can't go, you <laughs> go the other way. That's, 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 that's what we do. Way. We're like, yeah, we are, we're, we're plumbers. So exactly. if, it's that's exactly it. So if one pipe isn't working properly and we can't open it up and fix it, we'll re we'll redirect it to another pipe. Uh, and that's kind of, that's, that's our business uh, every day. So like I said, I don't want to, uh, you know, oversimplify these things, but if you want to like, you know, really sort of take a, a layman's look at what we do, that's it. We're, we're plumbers. That's it. Well, thank you so much for sharing all of your information today, Morgan. You did a great job of, of making it easy to understand and, and we know what to look out for and, and, and what to do when, when that happens. Well, I, thank you. I appreciate it because, again, with what we deal with, this is one of the things that, especially on the venous side, that patients can um, self-diagnose for the most part. If you see varicose veins or, uh, you know, reddening of skin, uh, loss of hair, swelling in your ankles, things like that, um, restless leg syndrome, these are all clear signs of venous disease. Once you come in for something like that, uh, we'll sort of uh, run a full gamut of, of tests to make sure that your arterial system is working out uh, as well as your venous system mm -hmm. and give you an idea as far as whether your uh, heart health is where it needs to be as well. So it's one of those really simple things. We offer free uh, vein screenings uh, on a daily. All you got to do is call us, uh, schedule an appointment. We'll come, you come in, it takes 15 minutes, uh, and we'll give you an assessment and, and let you know kind of what, uh, uh, where you stand and whether there's anything for you to be worried about. That's a really nice service. Again, thank you so much. And for everyone listening, be well, stay connected.